Hi, my name is Mr. John. I'm here to tell you guys a little bit about knife safety today. The first thing I want to go through with you is I have a couple of different knives laid out. And this is my best friend, Swan. Swan's here right now because I want to have a little bit of fun. But when you're playing with a knife or you're using a knife, it's a tool. It's not something that you should be forcing around with. So a couple of quick things. We'll go through a couple of different kinds of knives first. First, we've got a knife that opens and locks. It's called a lock back, locks, or it's called a jackknife um, because of what it, when it opens and closes, it'll, it'll jack open. These knives are in different sizes, so I've got a little one right here, which is great for you guys as Cub Scouts. It's small, you can go through, you can use it to whittle and do different things. So this is a perfect knife for you. If your parents are watching with you, it's a perfect knife for you to go through and use uh, for whittling and different things that we would have to use in the Scout world. This is a good size knife for you to carry if you've got a sheath or if you're going to carry it in your pocket. Now this same style, this obviously isn't a knife, but it's that same style. And this would be a jack, jackknife style, but this is a handsaw. But it's that same idea for what you would have for a jackknife. So that's pretty cool. Um, the next knife, this is my Eagle Scout knife. Um, it's called a pen knife. So it's got a couple of small blades that are in it that open up. Um, this knife is super, super handy for things like whittling. It's small, the handle's shaped a little bit to give you a little bit of contour so you can control it when you're doing things like whittling. Um, so that knife's super cool. Um, they have what's called a fixed blade knife. So this is a diving knife. I use this when I go kayaking, etc. It's got a, some paracord on it. But it's a fixed blade. It's one solid piece of steel. This thing doesn't do any, it doesn't fold or do anything like that. So you usually carry this style knife in a sheath. It's a diving knife in case you had to go through and cut uh, cables, that type of stuff, and it locks into its sheath. And it doesn't come out, and you gotta push a button to release it, so that's kind of a safety issue there. Um, a couple of other style fixed blade knives that, that I regularly utilize this is a fillet knife. Um, it's also a sportsman safety knife, so it comes in also a locking sheath. Uh, it's got a belt loop that you can carry, obviously, with your belt loop uh, if you want to utilize that style. a hunting knife so this one's super super cool too but a fixed blade and I use this one in this style sheath but I use this particular knife when I go hunting this is uh, if you're going through and you're field dressing animals that type of stuff you can use that knife it's also a fixed blade and then the last fixed blade this is pretty cool it's a little bit bigger but it's a fillet knife so if you're going fishing you can use this style knife to go through and, and do some fishing um, cutting the fish so obviously you can eat it and then again it's also in that style sheath so a couple of good things well the last one sorry i didn't show you guys this but um a lot of guys go through and carry these it's a multi-tool um so it's got a lot of cool stuff in it it's got things like a screwdriver um, it's got the pliers that i just showed you when you were there but it also it has in there it has a knife so you want to be just as careful with something that like a multi-tool because it obviously uh, it could be unsafe or used in an unsafe way. Um, so those are pretty cool. Um, this particular guy doesn't want to close. There we go. So we got a multi-tool. Um, so knives, obviously, you can see from what we have here, we've got knives that we can use for different reasons, and those are tools. We use those as tools. Um, the key to any, there's a couple of keys I should say for any of these knives. You want to obviously, you always want to keep your blade clean. You always want to keep your blade sharp. So a couple of different ways that you can tell if a knife is sharp is you can go through and you want to be careful. You want to have your parents around. If you run the, the, the blade of the knife and you run it on your fingernail at a reasonable angle, it shouldn't slide off. If it slides off, it's dull. Uh, it goes through and you utilize it like this. Um, it, it, and it stops at some point shows that the knife is sharp. Can you run inside real quick and give me a ketchup packet? Ketchup packet, please. Um, next thing, when you're, whenever you have a pocket knife, you want to make sure that, that when using that pocket knife, that you don't put that pocket knife in your pocket open. You always want to use a pocket knife. Um, you always want to make sure that that pocket knife is closed when you go through it and you keep it with you. This way you don't jab yourself or do anything like that. Um, one thing that you start doing later on in Cub Scouts and all throughout Boy Scouts and the remainder of your life is you can go through and you can start using knives, which are tools, you can use them for things like whittling. So when you go through and do whittling, you want to make sure, like, 
you'll use this style knife here, but when you go through and you're doing things like whittling, challenging handling So when you go through and you're whittling, you always want to make sure that when you cut, you're cutting away from yourself first and foremost. Cutting away. You always want to try and cut big, big strokes. The idea is not to sit there and try and make little tiny little cuts when you do something like that. You want to make big strokes when you go through and you whittle. Um, so you want, to, you want to cut big times. Uh, that's super important as well. Um, anytime you handle a knife, whether it's got a fixed blade or whether it's you know a folding knife like this or a multi-purpose knife or a multi-tool or any one of those, you always want to have the blade away from you. That's a big deal. The blade always wants to be away from you. You never want to have the blade going towards you or close to you. That's super important. Um, the first thing I want to go through is the cameraman happens to be one of my sons and he's a distance away from me, he's a certain distance and they call that a safety circle or a blood circle. Um, you guys can all figure out why they would call, why they would go through and call that a blood circle. Um, that's so you don't go through and obviously take your knife and if you're too close to someone you would cut them. Uh, it's also a safety circle so as far as somebody else should be whenever you're using a knife, if you're whittling or you're doing something, you want to make sure that they're outside of that circle, which is an arm's length all the way around. So my best friend Swan here, if I was getting too close, I'd be cutting Swan's neck, right? Because Swan, too close, right? So you want to make sure that everything's outside of your blood circle when you go through or your safety circle when you go through and use a knife. Um, uh, last thing, any, any knife that you go through and, and utilize, you want to be very careful because a good knife is a sharp knife. Uh, we said you want to keep knives sh safe, um, you want to keep them dry, uh, you want to keep them really sharp. So it's super, super important for that. Um, one of the situations is if you're, if you're going through, you want to cut away, you always want to be cutting away with your whittling or cutting away if you're you know, if you're going through and you're, you're cutting food and stuff like that, you just want to make sure that the blade's going away. Um, if you get too close and you start doing things and you're cutting towards, you end up just cutting yourself and you squirt blood all over the place. So you don't want to go through and do that. You want to make sure you're cutting away. That's what's safe. Um, it's going to stop you from going through and cutting yourself. Um, you end up, you get blood all over your fingers. You cut yourself open real bad. So basic first aid that you would have um, for a knife cut you get a small cut, the first thing you want to do is go through and you want to wash your cut out with soap and water, and then you go through and you utilize a band-aid for the correct size that you have. So laughingly, I just used some ketchup to kind of show you guys like what would happen, how you'd squirt yourself and cut yourself real bad. But the last thing that I want to show you is something that I'll always have for life. When I was about your age uh, in Cub Scouts, I went through and I wasn't paying attention, and I was at my grandfather's house, um, and I was I was peeling a kiwi um, and I was using a paring knife, a fixed blade paring knife, and I was peeling a kiwi and I cut myself and I got nine stitches. So I'll have this for the rest of my life, but I cut my finger wide open to get nine stitches when I was a kid because I wasn't being careful with a knife. So um, I want you guys to know and understand that. Uh, if you have any questions, my name is Mr. John. Uh, any one of your parents or your den leaders can go through and reach out to me uh, about knife safety and I'd be happy to go through it with you. Anything else, let me know. I appreciate taking this time to go through it with you. I hope you guys have a fun virtual camp. Thanks.